Now, by the way, if you are booked in to be a guest on the show, just to warn you now, the obligatory photographs of my new baby will be shown up to the screen. So if you don't want that to happen, then you will have to cancel our conversation. Um, I think I've shown him to everybody so far. Uh, Tim from Compassion, he had a look. Um, and Jude has just had a look as well. Good morning, Jude. Morning, Gareth. Yeah, he's got a great pouty face there. It's, uh, <laughs> it's an amazing, yeah. Uh, big boy. <laughs> now, um, I need to apologise to you because you were one of the few guests, I guess, who who were caught up in that transition of me thinking I would be on air and then having to go halfway through the show so you weren't on. So what we're about to hear actually is... I suppose it's a long-awaited message because this has been on the boil for about two weeks. So it should be a good one, eh, Jude? Yeah, you're really raising the expectations there, Gareth. I'm, uh, I, I have been marinating in this for a couple of weeks, but uh, oh, I like you're setting the bar phrase. quite high there. Marinating. So <laughs> this is a message which has been marinating for quite a while. And we're going to talk about um, lines from TV shows, because you've been watching some TV, haven't you? And it, it sort of led you to a bit of a conclusion, really. Uh, quite a big conclusion, hope in life after death. Over to you. Thanks, Gareth. Yeah, um, so it's uh, it's a bit of a mouthful. Really, the, 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 the phrase, the word hope is the one that I was focusing on. And uh, so, yeah, I was watching those two different TV shows I've been watching lately. Uh, one is called Sandman. The Sandman, it's quite a famous, well-known show, a lot, very popular. Um, and there's this one line in that film that really kind of, struck me uh and felt really incongruous from this the other show which i was watching which is called the mysterious benedict society uh, you don't need to know the names of these things but it's a it's a young adult show basically and with the sandman there's there's this line where he um one of the uh characters is this waitress and she's uh, she's talking to this guy and she says you know i write fiction uh because all my stories have happy endings so it's clearly fiction because it has happy endings and the guy she's talking to says, actually, you know, you just know when to stop because ultimately all stories have sad endings because all stories end in death. Very cheery thought for this uh, this time of morning. Um, but it's it, it just for me, there's something really deep in that in that conversation that happened um, and how with the second story, the, the, the theme of the story is there's this thing called the emergency. It's not quite clear from the first episode that I watched what the emergency is. But everyone's really anxious and worried and uncertain. And there's this sense of like, we're not quite sure what's happening, but but everyone is fearful and anxious about something. Um, and and in the story, um, there's this young group of kids, basically, who are recruited as the only hope for humanity. And I assume I haven't watched, I mean, I've only watched one episode, but I assume by the end of the story, they save the day, you know, by the end of the, the show. Um, and for me, that felt less believable than the quote from Sandman. And I was trying to reconcile what the difference was and why one felt more realistic than the other. And I think I, I, I came to realize that every good story has to have a certain structure. So there has to be a hero. They have to have some kind of problem or conflict to overcome. And at the end of the story, they usually save the day. And I think that the trouble we have today is that, or at least for me, and I know for a lot of my friends and people that I know, um, I feel like my heart has kind of gone cynical to the possibility of salvation. I totally believe in the conflict because I see the world around me and I see, you know, uh, the economy, the environment, there's all these big problems that I can do nothing about. And I believe in that conflict deeply, that problem but the salvation, the possibility of salvation is the thing that I do think that as a culture, we've really grown cynical to. And that's why a kid's story is the one where the hero saved the day, whereas a grown-up story is the one which is really depressing and, and dark, uh, at least the ones because that I tend to watch. Yeah. I think it is hard to understand, isn't it? Because, you know, all of us have done bad things. Mm. And the thing is that when you read the Bible and you hear about Jesus Christ, it's hard to, to sort of accept that a person was completely sinless. A person yeah. was perfect. Yeah. And I think it's hard to actually think that in this broken world at the moment that we could be forgiven. 
And I made a comment earlier on, actually, which um, I won't take credit for this because I can't remember where it was now. I read it. But it was, that's it. It was the notes from the church service I was at on Sunday, actually. And it was talking about how what we need to do is to think of when God sees us, he sees the cross and Jesus Christ. Mm -hmm. He doesn't mm -hmm. see the fact that Jude did this, that Gareth did that, and mm -hmm. they haven't been, you know, perfect because none of us are perfect. But I I think that as a human being, part of the difficulty we have, and maybe you can pick up on this, is actually sort of forgiving ourselves. We've been yeah. forgiven by God, but it's part of the problem. How do we forgive ourselves and accept that forgiveness that is handed over to us freely? Yeah, I think I remember hearing somewhere, it, it might be the same sermon that you listened to, but it, um, it was basically this idea that, you know, it's sometimes harder to look at the brokenness inside of us uh, than it is to look at the brokenness around us in the world. But actually, you know, that is another part of that sense of, you know, is there hope? Can I really change? Can I really be someone different than who I want to, uh, than who I am right now? And And for sure, I think that's a big part of that struggle is that sense of, the world is not changing and actually I'm not changing either or I can't change. I can't bring about change in my life. Um, and I like that image of God looking at Jesus uh, when he sees us, he sees Jesus. Um, and I just, uh, I think for me, the big takeaway really was that, you know, Jesus kind of in the Bible, he talks about how we have hope for after we die and, you know, and that death is not the end. So going back to that first quote, you know, all stories end in death. Actually, they don't. And for us, that is amazing that actually death has lost its sting, as the Bible says. And 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 that actually that has been redeemed. But also, I think there's this element of actually the Bible talks about how the Holy Spirit transforms us today and how he is real and he has a real transformational impact on our lives today and on our identity today. And, and so we don't just get to look forward to redemption one day, you know, when we die, but actually today we get to see that and we get to be living proof of that kind of transformation uh, to ourselves and to the world around us. And for me, that is the bit that really gives me hope that actually, you know, I can see the Holy Spirit bring about change in my life and I can see Jesus bring about change in my life through what he's doing today. Um, yeah. And I'd. I don't think we put enough emphasis on, like you said, that actually change is possible with yeah. us as we are right now. And there's mm -hmm. a real power in prayer. I mean, I'm sure you've got loads of stories at the organization Agape UK, because actually we haven't mentioned them yet. <laughs> I just said it's due. <laughs> so um, you and the organization, you will have so many stories of people's lives being changed by a relationship through Jesus Christ and also through prayer as well. Yeah, I think, and I, I see that, even this past week, I've seen people where as they've allowed the Holy Spirit to enter parts of their lives where they've maybe tried to take ownership again and, and take charge of those areas. Actually, God makes a difference in those parts of their lives. And, and you know, I think for my, my encouragement for those of your listeners who believe in Jesus is actually go, keep going back to him. We have a tendency to retake ownership of areas of our life. Uh, where we think actually you know this is something that i want to keep to myself and actually taking those back to god and saying lord i want to give these back to you and i want your holy spirit to be in charge of this area of my life we actually have a uh, uh on there's a U version bible app where we have a, a five-day devotional it's called hope for transformation uh and it's something that i did just a, a, a few months ago just to um explore this topic more deeply and for, for Christians particularly that's a great way to even get to experience and, and study what the Bible has to say not just what you know Jude on Connect Radio has to say um, and and really grapple with these topics of how he brings about change today and for those who don't know Jesus as well actually there is hope I want to encourage people to say you know this is not this is not the end that actually there's hope today and there's hope for when we die that actually that is not the end either and and so that that those who don't know Jesus actually can find that hope when they meet him. And it's it's not the Sandman version of the world, but actually that that Benedict Society version of the world is the world that we live in. We are in that process of being transformed and one day we will be um, totally transformed as well. Um, 
Um, yeah. I'm on it now, actually. So um, if you've got your Bible app, uh, the U, the U version one, which I think most people have. I mean, I remember reading this was around Christmas time that they've had something like a billion downloads on this. Yeah. Um, and the plan is called Hope for Transformation, if you search it, and it says, uh, published by Agape UK, and start the plan. And I'll tell you what we could do, actually. We could start it as a group, because I think you can actually sort of, uh, you can invite other people to it, yeah. and you'll be able to see what progress they've made on it. And maybe we can come back to this um, at some time in the future, because I think Leslie's back next week. He is, yeah. But um, that doesn't mean that you'll be going anywhere because we want you back on. So we'll find somewhere <laughs> to get you on, um, whether or not it's a different spot or a different show, uh, because what the country needs is more Jude. I don't know if you've heard Amazing, that phrase right? before. <laughs> It's, it's um, the first time I've heard that phrase, but, but thank uh, you. Well, uh, it is a phrase that has been coined here for the first time. Uh, the country needs more Jude. So the website that you need to go to to find out all about Agape UK and these type of conversations are what we should be having, whether or not you're a believer or not. These are important conversations. You know, where does your hope come from? I don't believe that... There's anybody who hasn't got hope in something. Whether or not you're a Christian, if you're of a different faith, you say that you've got no faith at all. You must have hope in something because it's the hope that gets you up in the morning. And it's the hope that just... And in fact, you see the devastation that happens when people do lose hope. So Agape dot org dot uk head over there if you want to get in touch with the team if you want to find out about their resources but this reading plan on the U version bible app is hope for transformation it's five days i'm just about to start it now uh, judy it's been an absolute pleasure thank you for being with us and it's not goodbye it's just putting you on ice and we'll have you back sometime soon thanks gareth i will speak to you soon <laughs>